Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad, your best place for weekly content on young American soccer players playing overseas. My name's Austin Van Tern. And my name's Patrick Ferry. And welcome to our show. Well guys, we have a great show for you today, including the start of the Bundesliga. We also have some great action, the Alsvenska in Sweden there, Austin. That's right. And then we also have another key loan move from one of our players. So let's, uh, let's get to our episode. All right, guys. So to start off the action, it was the opening weekend for the Bundesliga. That's we, right. We had a lot of young talents uh, uh, you know, start off with some uh, good debuts for the 2018-19 uh, season. And uh, one for Borussia Dortmund that we're pretty well familiar with. That's also. right. And that would be Christian Pulisic. So Christian actually played 77 minutes in Dortmund's uh, impressive, I would say, 4-1 uh, win over Red Bull Leipzig, or Rassen Ballsport Ooh, Leipzig. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Christian Pulisic uh, was actually taking corners and set pieces in this game, and uh, that was something new that we haven't seen uh, so far in his right. career. He delivered one uh, pretty well, uh, well, and that led to a goal, Austin, right? Yeah, and that was uh, for Dortmund's third goal, um, yeah. so it was like a cross into the box, um, that I believe was headed by, I think it was Mo Dehoud first, um, into the goalie, and then uh, Axel Witzel finished the rebound. I like him, I think it's a good sign. Like. I like that play. Yeah, he's, he's impressed, uh, you know, very well so far. He scored in uh, Dortmund's DFB Pokal game Ooh. over... Uh, step up from Zenit, Austin. <laughs> well, step up from China. China, China. yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's, he's looked good, and uh, you know, Christian in this game looked good at times. He had a few bright moments, but he also had... A lot of moments where he dribbled the ball a little bit too, or so, a little too long. Some common, I guess, points and themes that you were bringing up uh, last season on Yaw as well, right? Yeah, and also last episode. Last we episode, were talking <laughs> About Christian. So, you know, we haven't, or at least in this game, we haven't really seen Christian uh, grow from that DFB Pokal game and, and realize that maybe taking on uh, an opponent in certain situations isn't the best move. But, you know, the season's long, and uh, Christian is always improving his game. Guys. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see what uh, Christian does in the coming season. One thing to monitor, though, is that Jaden Sancho came on for Pulisic at the end of this game. He looked pretty good, right? He, he looked very good, and, and he's always looked very uh, entertaining, I guess would be the word I'd use. Whenever he's on the pitch, he's always trying. There's a little flair or something, right? Yeah, a lot of flair. A lot of flair for, uh, you know, one of the... England's uh, brightest young That's stars right. coming right. up. But um, yeah, so he came on at the end of the game for Christian. Um, had an assist for Marco Royce's uh, first Bundesliga goal of the season and also the last goal in this game. So that's something to monitor. He's looked good in both games that he's come on for Dortmund this year. And Pulisic's looked, you know, good, I would say, but hasn't been really a, a true difference maker. Um, he was kind of in the DFB Pokal right. game, but in this game, I wouldn't say he was a difference maker. So um, that would be one thing to keep an eye on in the future. And there was uh, some discussion on Twitter as well after this game Ooh. of whether or not Jaden Sancho is, uh, you know, has more potential, some would say, or if... A uh, bunch of know, rumors right now. <laughs> yeah, a l little bit of the rumor mill starting, um, where if he should start over Pulisic yeah, or something yeah. like that. But uh, yeah, so that's the situation to, to, to monitor, and we'll monitor that for you guys. But uh, now we want to go over to another player who had an amazing weekend and has really gotten off to a good start for his new team. And Pat, who would that be? That is our boy Romain Gall, Austin. That's right. And uh, you know, obviously that move from Gift Stunesvall to Malmo, he's been uh, you know, kind of in and out of the team, just kind of getting adjusted, but playing very well. Uh, and this was, uh, I think, uh, you know, he's, he started, I think, a game before that we were watching uh, uh, back yeah, a few at weeks uh, ago. Adela, yeah, a few weeks ago, but uh, <laughs> this one was you know great, a great, fantastic start. He actually had a brace, um, scored in the in the second half there. In the first goal, uh, he kind of looked like the one of the strikers kind of held it, played it back to him right, right a little ahead of the eighteen, and he mm -hmm. powerfully slotted in with his left foot there into the left side of the uh, the goal, which is it was a beautiful goal, Austin. And oh, then nice. yeah. the, the second one there. I like this well, one even better. The second one fantastic. <laughs> he, he had that mindset, Austin, which we want a striker. That just, 
he it was 1v1. He didn't care who was in front of him. He did some scissors, some, you know, step overs <laughs> and just right. blasted it. I think it was like near post or something. It was yeah, it, it was, was it was just powerful rocket. with the right yeah. foot. So he scored a goal with each foot and a great start, Austin. Nine goals in the Alsvenska so far uh, this year. So it's good form. <laughs> good form there. But um, form. again, another uh, you brought up, you know, the Twitter talk uh, earlier with Pulisic there. But uh, Romain Gall, there's been some Twitter talk about his performances uh, and his rise, I guess, overall that could warrant a uh, potential call up for the U.S. That's as we right. are a little yeah. thin in the striker pool. Yeah, and also on the wing. I mean, on we, the wing we, as well. we could use uh, you know a dynamic winner. Wi- uh, Winger, we could also use a winner, right. I guess, as well. <laughs> both, but um, both. <laughs> yeah, we we could definitely use someone who um, you know has a little flair to his game, kind of yeah. like we were talking about. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I would love to see Romain Gall get called up. I think he's uh, he's taken that that really hard road to get to, um, I guess, have find success right, in, in yeah. Europe. Um, so I think it would be cool to see uh, him you know, get paid off, or at least, you know, all those challenges and what he's overcome, get paid off with a, a cap in some of these really important games this fall, even though, I guess you could argue they're not important, but they're yeah, influential yeah. because influential. they're big opponents, and we we can't get, uh, you know, killed in these exactly. games in the fall. we got to show yeah. up and play, so. Play the youngsters, prove their worth. Well, yeah, but, uh, no, yeah. I, hopefully I, what we'll do. I think, yeah, you, again, you brought us some great points, and, uh, um, yeah, just just love that attitude where he, even early on, I was actually watching uh, some of the game online uh, stream before it crashed, and I didn't see the goals, but he <laughs> was... Yeah, first round. Yeah, dang it first round. <laughs> um, no, he looked, he looked fantastic. Again, he was hungry, he was calling for the ball, and he was actually deployed in the, um, the midfield on the right side. Okay. So he was playing, again, kind of on that wing, like a midfield kind of winger position like you were mentioning more in the wing, but okay. uh, yeah, he looked great. He took a, actually another shot that, you know, it wasn't so great, but similar to his second goal, but it looked like it apparently didn't uh, waver his confidence, and that's a great sign. He was also man of the match and got a standing that's ovation. Right, yeah. All the fans in the same were chanting, that, go, yeah. go, go, go. That was, yeah. yeah, that was really cool. <laughs> so, yeah, again, another player that uh, we want to uh, keep monitoring, and then also shifting yeah. over to another youngster, a striker with a uh, enormous potential in the Bundesliga there. So yeah, and that's uh, who Austin. That would be Josh Sargent. So Josh actually actually scored uh, again this weekend for Werder Bremen's U twenty threes. It was a nice goal that he uh, just dribbled into the box, took a shot, and you know went by the goalkeeper. It was a you know pretty standard goal. Um, but yeah, it's good to see Josh scoring. This is his third goal in five games for right. the U23s. So at least he's producing at that U23 level. Um, you know, if he, he looked good in the game. I saw a few other highlights on uh, US Manash, or USMNT videos, uh, that account. Twitter account. Account. Keep, you know, follow them. We, we brought them up last time, but <laughs> go follow that account. Um, and he had some, some really nice plays uh, throughout the game. You know, looked very similar to what we've seen so far from him at, uh, you know, for the U.S. men's national team um, at the U-17 okay. level and the U-20 level. Just every touch he takes, uh, it seems like he's, he's productive with the ball, and that's what it looked like from all the, the highlights I saw Definitely. of that game. Um, so it's encouraging to see. So, um, you know, hopefully he'll continue to produce at the get U-23 that, get level. That first team. I hope. I was, <laughs> I was expecting maybe a little bit more involvement with the first team, but, you know, there's probably a good reason why he's not involved with that first team unfortunately right for for Bremen but um yeah if he if he you know stays uh hungry committed and uh you know produces at the U23 level I think that that first team yeah. call up will you know be coming very soon for, I agree uh, sounds for like Bremen. he's got a good uh, work ethic there so yeah from everything we've seen he's uh you know the prototypical striker that you want uh yeah. for your national team and also for your club team Someone who, uh, you know, has a good mentality as well, Absolutely. which we saw in those rising videos. Um, yeah, yeah, those are awesome, by so, the way, so check yeah. those out. <laughs> yeah, definitely. If you haven't watched them already, then what are you doing, man? You gotta, you gotta watch them. You have to watch them. But, um, yeah, so now let's go over to you. Uh, interesting loan move, mm-hmm. to say the least. And, Pat, who would that loan move be for? And that would be Austin Cameron Carter-Vickers getting a, a loan, a, a season-long loan to a Swansea in the championship. So I think, uh, you know, this is a pretty good move. Uh, obviously, yeah. Tottenham is pretty stacked in the back, and he's <laughs> kind of, he would be uh, you yeah. know, scarce for minutes, maybe some action, League Cup. So it's great to see him again get some more first-team minutes. And Pochettino, I think, has high hopes uh, for him in the future because he just signed another extension to 2021, I believe. Yeah. So 
Um, again, yeah, we, we've mentioned the show. He was back with Sheffield Wednesday, I believe. Uh, right, Sheffield United. Yeah, Sheffield mm -hmm. United. Yep. And then uh, Ipswich Town. Right. And, you know, he performed pretty well, but again, kind of switching, uh, you know, two halves of the season to different teams is pretty rough. It's so tough. to mm -hmm. get a season-long loan with a solid, a well-known team, and uh, I know they're pretty scarce, <laughs> right, center backs? Yeah, we were, we were going through it earlier, so they have, what, two other center backs yeah. on the roster now? Yeah. Because Alfie <laughs> Mawson's left for Fulham. Um, Don't blame him. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, I don't believe anyone who's left that team. Um, there was another center back who I believe went to Newcastle. That I'm, the name's forgetting me at the moment or slipping my mind. I think it's uh, Fabri uh, Fazio. I, I uh, think. No, some, some. Bear with us. But but anyway, the the main point was that uh, you know Swansea's very thin at uh, center back. Pat, right? They yeah. only have two on their roster. Yeah, twenty five year old like Van Vanderhorn, um, who uh, play last featured for the Netherlands international U twenties. <laughs> Um, he's played a little bit in the Premier League. He's played League, a little bit, yeah. He's, he's not a great yeah, you know, center back. Exactly. And then another youngster who's been in their academy for years. Um, and I, I believe, yeah, it's uh, John... Uh, Rondon. Rondon, yes. Yeah, so, or Joe Rondon. Joe Rondon. Uh, Joe Rondon. 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 And he is, he's a 20-year-old center back. Very young. And uh, Swansea, when they were in the, the Premier League, uh, kind of brought him in played very scarcely and eventually loaned him out to Sheltonham, I believe, last year okay. in uh, League One. So not the, you know, not the greatest, a little you know, young and inconsistent, <laughs> but again, a great opportunity for Carter Vickers to come in right away. It looks like they could really rely on him heavily. Yeah, and I mean, that's a team that you would think that their aspirations are to get back into the Premier League as fast yeah. as they can, like this year, <laughs> yeah, right. in their minds. Um, so hopefully you'll be a part of that. I don't know. We'll have to yeah, see how Swansea good. plays. But uh, yeah, good stuff yeah. for CCV, and we, uh, we hope the best for the loan move and uh, That's talking right. about him going forward. But uh, again, switching uh, you know, the gears, I guess, a league above. Um, in the Premier yeah. League, <laughs> and that's uh, none other than uh, DeAndre Yedlin, Austin. Oh, yeah. Uh, so he's back from that knee injury, a little scare that's we had good. earlier. That's good to see. Good stuff to see, yeah. And uh, he was <laughs> he had a mixed result. I'd say overall, not so good. 2-1 uh, loss to Chelsea. Um, he looked pretty bright from what I uh, you know read and kind of saw some highlights throughout the game, and I believe it was tied 0-0 until maybe like the 70-plus minute um, yeah, I watched the, the first half of that game, but I didn't. Yeah, I didn't see the end of it. Yeah, so. yeah, the end yeah, was apparently <laughs> crazy. And um, mm -hmm. it, apparently, from multiple reactions, I don't know if there's any Chelsea fans that watch, but <laughs> uh, it looked like allegedly uh, or accusations of Yedlin uh, purposely elbowing Giroud. Uh, the ball was kind of mm -hmm. up in the air, and Yedlin kind of looked like they both were looking at it, and Yedlin kind of saw Giroud coming. But wanted to, I think, shield him off, and Drew kind of like stuck his head in a little. But so I'm not sure if he was. I don't think he was intentionally trying to, you know, clock him in the, in the face, <laughs> Austin. But again, yeah. continued play like you should. Had a great cross in to uh, I think it's Hasalu. Is that how you pronounce that? Hasalu. I think it's Hasalu. Hasalu. Yeah. yeah. Hasalu. Hasalu. Something, like, Something that. like that. Uh, yeah. He was able to finish it off, and uh, I believe that tied the game. So Yedlin got the assist there, which is great. But then, unfortunately, a few <laughs> minutes later. Had an yeah. own goal, Austin. Um, I think it was uh, Alonzo who kind of scuffed his shot there, and it was just a roller, kind of went through someone's legs, and Yedlin <laughs> stuck out his foot, and it looked like he really regretted that. Oh, and as boy. soon as he did, it like roll, trickled into the, uh, the, the po off the post there, kind of into the goal, and oh. you could see the, top, uh, the Newcastle reactions, where they're just like, oh, no. He said one guy was punching the ground. Yeah, one guy's like <laughs> slamming the ground. So, you know, they worked pretty hard, you know. They played pretty well. and uh, Yeah, I mean, they were going to get a good yeah. result. But again, guess, so. yeah, again, just yeah. great to see Yedlin, uh, you know, from that knee injury scare go 90 minutes and hopefully he can bounce back from that. Yeah, and hopefully we'll see him uh, this fall, you know, coming That's up right. in September because we, uh, since Jack Moore apparently uh, <laughs> oh, can't play now yeah. with uh, Royce for the, yeah, a little bit of uh, time here. Some kind of paperwork or registration issues, issues. but uh, again yeah. yeah some some crazy news but uh, again we need, we'll need DeAndre that's we will need DeAndre <laughs> <laughs> but uh, again shifting back to uh, some more action in the Bundesliga Austin oh yeah and this one was another late dramatic uh, loss I guess for one of uh, our players yeah. <laughs> and that would be uh, Wes McKinney who played uh, the full 90 for Schalke who lost 2-1 an extra time to Wolfsburg, mm. and uh, John Jad. Anthony Brooks had a goal in this game, which was, uh, you know, a good thing for American yeah. followers or watchers. 
Um, so overall, I would say the game for Wes McKinney was uh, a mixed bag. I don't think he played uh, his best game that we've seen him play. Um, it looked kind of like on John Anthony Brooks' goal. I only was able to see it a few times, um, but it looked like he kind of crashed down a little too early and um, could have been marking John Anthony Brooks. I'm not sure. I, I should have did zonal my better homework. Yeah, yeah but it looked kind of like they did uh, like zonal marking on that on that corner in that set piece, and it looked like uh, Deion, er, DeAndre <laughs> Wes McKinney uh, kind of collapsed on a player that made a run in front of him. And that left John Anthony Brooks kind of wide open, um, further behind him. So uh, yeah, that wasn't great, I would say, for Weston. And then uh, a few moments during the game, he just was um, kind of caught out in possession mm, a little bit. Like to step off or something. A little bit. I mean, it wasn't like as bad as I'm probably making it out to be, but I expected a little bit more of Weston in the game. Um, Shock as a whole didn't play, you know, great. Yeah. So. Their style of playing, we were talking about Wasn't this earlier. Wasn't the most exciting game to watch. <laughs> no, they don't play fun, exciting, uh, <laughs> attacking football, I guess you would say. Yeah, regarding so, Klopp, likes to call it heavy metal football. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Liverpool uh, yeah. <laughs> doing great these days. Yeah, right. But, um, but yeah, so, so Weston, not, not the best game from Weston. Um, don't really have any more than that to say, to be honest with you, about Weston. But, uh, you know, it's, start. I guess the one, yeah, that's that's what I was just going to get to. So the one good thing coming away from this game, even though his performance wasn't, you know, the greatest performance, was that he did start this game. So that was the big question mark, I guess, coming from last week, was whether or not he'll start uh, the Bundesliga season for Schalke. So we, we got that question answered. It looks like he is the starter, at least to start the season. We'll see next week if he yeah. still is in that starting lineup. But, um, yeah, that's good to see because during preseason he was kind of rotated in and out of that midfield, and I was a little concerned as to whether or not he'd be that game or that first day, um, you know, opening day right. starter for Schalke. So it's good to see that he is the opening day sh starter for Schalke. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll let you guys know uh, next week. You know, we're hoping he starts again. Yeah, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so now the last player in this segment we're going to touch on is Lyndon Gooch. So, Pat, yeah. how did uh, Gucci bra do? Gucci, Gucci <laughs> bra, yeah. In uh, League One. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Lyndon Gooch, uh, you know, giving Sunderland fans even more joy, uh, especially in their troubles in League One, getting an assist in a 2-1 win over AFC Wimbledon. Which was, uh, by the way, a side note, a uh, team that in FIFA uh -huh. I brought from League, uh, when they were in League 2, all the way up to the Prem. So, oh, shout out to FIFA. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> and they also had, uh, if you don't remember, Akin Fenwa, the strongest player. Oh, that's right. Player that's right. Yeah. But, <laughs> side note, uh, Lyndon Gooch looked fantastic. <laughs> uh, again, so energetic. And one of those players, like I mentioned with uh, Gall before in this episode, very dynamic, was taking players on, did not care who was in front of him, just really wanted to... You know, we, you know, that hungry mindset and that creativity and just kind of, you know, again, with mm -hmm. some step overs and, cro um, uh, sc you know, scissors or whatever you call them <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. To, to get the, uh, the cross. So he took someone on the left side and crossed it into the box. And uh, I think it was uh, Cat Lee Catam Catamol. Oh, know. was it really? Yeah, oh, okay. he, scored, he scored both of them. Oh, geez. But, um, <laughs> yeah, again, uh, he looked, again, dynamic, energetic, like we've seen, has four assists now. He's actually awesome. Every game that they've played so far has either had a goal or an assist, some involvement. Can't he's, get much better than that. Can't get much better than that. And okay. so he's tied at the top of the assist leaderboard um, in League One. So again, all all positives. If uh, keeps continuing this momentum, I know it is a you know the third tier in England. <laughs> so maybe it's not as. Hey yeah, man, he's building. He's, he's building bu yeah, that uh, he's credibility. Building. So I mean, yeah. again, he's performing week in week out and. Uh, not, yeah. yeah, not much else we can say, but just keep up the good work, Lyndon. <laughs> That's right, yeah. All right, guys, so you already know what time it is. Oh, yeah, it's that time again. It's that time again, none other than Quick Kicks. Let's see you could test Dwayne Miller. It's Altador over the wall! All right, guys, so to begin our extended version of Quick Kicks, we want to touch on uh, a dual net, Austin. That's right, and that would be Jens Kahusta, who made his debut for FC Michiland over the weekend, playing 11 minutes in their 3-0 win over Randers. And then staying in Denmark, we want to touch on Jonathan Amon, who made his first start since coming back from injury, playing 63 minutes in uh, Nordschieland's unfortunate 1-0 loss to Horsens. 
Switching over to France here, Austin, we had uh, Matt Miazga with a strong uh, 90 minutes in Nantes' first point in a 1-1 draw against Khan. That's right. And now moving over to Argentina for the very first time, Joel Senora actually got uh, an assist on the second goal for his team, Tejaris, in their 2-0 win over Gimnasio this past weekend. And again, staying in Argentina, we want to talk about Georgia Costa, who, if you don't know, was on that U-17 roster this past yeah. fall, was playing for Boca Juniors U-19 team, actually scored a goal this weekend in their 1-0 win. And, and moving over to Belgium. <laughs> that's right. Who do we have, Pat? We have uh, Brandon uh, heinz Ike, who uh, produced another solid outing and a, and a great assist there in a 2-0 win over Chalawa. That's right. And then going back to Germany, we have Chris Gloucester, who recently got called up to Hanover's uh, 2 team from their U19 team. Nice. Made his debut this weekend, playing 25 minutes. So to end the show today, guys, we're going to end it very similar to the way we've done it the past few episodes. And that would be to talk about a few young yaws for you guys to keep your eyes on. So the first one would be Pat. It's Armando Chachua, who's uh, been lighting it up for uh, Tottenham's U18s and is also the captain there. And Austin, he has uh, four assists and a goal in, his, uh, in three games there. So that's exciting stuff for Armando, and uh, keep uh, wishing him the best there. That's right. right also, and now moving over to Mexico, we have uh, Jonathan Suarez, we want to touch on real quick, who made his pro debut for Quetorero, uh this past weekend. He's a 21-year-old midfielder, uh, dual nat, Mexican-American. So definitely nice. someone to uh, you know keep on your radar. Now to move over to Germany, we have another striker, or a striker we want to talk about. And right. who would that be, Pat? And that's uh, Maurice Malone, Austin. And he's uh, been scoring fantastically. Six goals in uh, four games for uh, Augsburg's U19. So uh, be on the lookout for him. That's right. And staying in Germany, we have a player who moved uh, just this past week. And that would be Max Rigova Jr., who transferred from uh, Sporting Kansas City's academy over to FC Nuremberg's academy. Oh, nice. He's an 18-year-old midfielder and definitely a bright uh, prospect for the future. So the final player today we want to talk about, and that would be Pat. That's uh, Peter Stroud, Austin, for, uh, for West Ham. And he was actually a former New York Red Bull Academy product. And he got his debut uh, for West Ham's U18, started the whole game, went the whole 90 there, in a 1-0 win over Swansea. So congrats to Peter. And again, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video and also subscribe to our channel. And also check out our awesome Instagram and Twitter pages. Uh, again, we're putting out that quality content for you guys. That's right. And uh, let us know in the comments. You know, last week we uh, added highlights to our videos for the very first time. We had a lot of, uh, you Good know. Good stuff, positive feedback. Positive feedback, that's right. So, uh, you know, let us know if you, if you like them. And again, guys, we're, we're trying to navigate those copyright issues and make sure that our uh, Bear with us. <laughs> videos stay up. So if, uh, if something happens, we have to take one down and re-upload. Uh, just want to let you guys know that that's a possibility and it might happen. You know what but, else uh, is a possibility, Austin? And will that happen. Be? Well, that I, th be. I think you know what it is, oh. if you don't mind taking it from here. That's right. <laughs> well, I think, I think one day the USA will win the World Cup.